It's been a while, huh? Yeah, yeah, I'm back. Well, kind of. I can't really say now if this is going to be consistent or not, but I'm here now. I changed my name to 102 seams. Uh, if you're not aware, that's how many seams are in a baseball. Uh, you know what? It's been too long since I've been here. Uh, let's get down to press tax. Weeks ago, I was scrolling through Twitter and I came across something pretty cool. The all-powerful pitching ninja himself posted yet another video of Razor reliever Chaz Rose slider. The slider actually has the most horizontal break out of any pitch in the big leagues, so it makes sense that A's reliever Jake Diekman responded to the ninja asking for the grip. Diekman's slider has always been unremarkable, ranking around the league average in break, but when duty calls, the ninja always comes in clutch when pitchers are in need. Diekman started throwing Rose slider after ninja posted the grip and immediately increased his slider break by over 5 inches, with his biggest breaker getting the 19.2 inches of horizontal break. Is it some kind of coincidence that Diekman hasn't given up a run yet this year? I say no. Based on average break, he basically just turned himself into the lefty Chaz Rowe, or at least he's the closest anyone's going to get in a while. No, seriously, look at this clip from the Ninja of Rowe flipped to look like a lefty next to Diekman. I started watching him a little closer after the whole pitching ninja exchange, and I noticed pretty quickly that Diekman's new frisbee slider plays really well off his fastball from his funky arm slot. He's got a mid-90s heater that he likes to work glove side or middle up, and he usually buries his slider arm side and down with the occasional backdoor slider to a righty. The combination of those spots in his slot can create a crazy tunneling effect. Check out the sequence he rung up Justin Upton on a few weeks ago. He starts him off with two heaters down and in to get him to straight to 0-2. Now these two pitches mixed with this one right here, another steamer that Upton fouls off. And then, boom, sword. Anyway, you can see now that, that new White Castle special at Diekman's tunnels real well off his fastball. It's actually a really common thing for pitchers to do even when they're already established big leaguers. As Diekman said in a recent interview, sometimes pitchers just need another weapon to get hitters out. You may not have realized it, but plenty of pitches you already know are mid-career additions. The best pitch of all time, Mo Rivera's cutter, was actually figured out when he was playing catch with teammate Ramiro Mendoza, when all of a sudden every ball he threw started cutting. Different grips, different arm angles, didn't matter. The ball just started cutting a few inches, and the cutter was born. He called it his gift from God. I call it the gift from huge hands, but you know, what do I know? Mo actually taught that cutter to Roy Halladay at the 2010 All-Star Game who threw two no-hitters, one being a perfecto using that cutter to play off his curveball. According to Charlie Huff, the knuckleball he threw lengthened his career by at least 15 years. And postseason legend Oral Hershiser started throwing a slider to work off his cutter and his curveball, and that netted him the longest scoreless inning streak of all time and a World Series MVP. There are plenty of guys in the league right now who've made additions to their repertoire. Trevor Bauer and Hugh Darvish seem like they do it every offseason. But pitchers don't just start throwing something new for no reason, it's usually to complement something they already throw. The general theory of pitch repertoire construction is that you need something that goes straight, something that goes up and down, something that goes side to side, and something you can work off your best pitch. I think that's a little antiquated, but I love the idea of guys working another pitch off their go-to. It's an awesome idea, and these four guys have done it really well. Now let's get into it. Hey, Shane Bieber's pretty good. Good enough to be third all-time in strikeouts through the first five starts of the season with 54. He's always been good at racking up punchies. He had 259 in 2019. But right now, he's on pace for 368 in a full season. What's the change that's been getting him all the strikeouts? Well, he's got himself a new tool. A low velo, high break cut Johnson with enough downward break to set up his curveball. His K percentage so far has skyrocketed from last year where he was third in the entire league in Ks. Could it be a consequence of hitters not seeing him for months? Sure, could be. I think he's just filthy, and the new cut piece makes him even filthier. Beeb's new cutter usually works in the high 80s and gets to 90 once in a while, and he works it middle away almost exclusively. He gets a couple inches of drop above the league average cutter, and it looks a little similar to a slider on occasion but it stays on fastball plane long enough to fool a guy sitting fastball or adjust into a breaker. See, the beauty of this pitch from Biebs doesn't lie in the movement or the way he spots it. The thing that makes his cutter great is how it tunnels off his curveball, which is easily Bieber's best K pitch. That breaker is really something else. 
which is great for him because he started using it a hell of a lot more. 10% more, actually. He gets swings and misses with it almost half the time he throws it, and he has a 40% K rate with the pitch, which is crazy to say the least. And hitters have a rough time getting it away from defensive players. Rarely does anyone actually find a hole. And with the cutter, Bieber makes his breaker even better than it already is. Okay, next guy. Ah, uh, yes. Yankees legend, Sonny Gray. Sorry, Yankees fans, for unlocking that horrible memory. Now that I mention it, the whole Sonny Gray Yankees debacle makes this part of the video that much funnier. See, while Sonny was in the Big Apple, the pitching coach at the time, Larry Rothschild, did a number on him by trying to force Sonny to throw a slider instead of his usual 12-6 curve. The numbers from his days as a stud in Oakland versus his Yankee days are staggering. It got so bad at one point that Sonny had one night where he got rocked at home by the Orioles, who let's just be clear are <coughs> awful, and got booed off the field by his own crowd and had the ultimate power move of smiling. That uh, <laughs> that made a lot of the Bronx very mad at Sonny, and he'd end up getting shipped off to Cincinnati where he'd meet the best pitching coach he ever had, Trevor Bauer. Sonny was having an all-star season already when Bauer got to Cincy, but he felt like he needed a breaking ball that had more horizontal movement than the one he was throwing to work off each other. Trevor had a slider just like that, so he worked with Sonny in the pen a few times, and just like that, the Reds had themselves one of the best sliders in the bigs seemingly overnight. If you've watched one of Sonny Gray's games, you'll notice that his slider and his curveball look really similar on camera, and that's actually on purpose. The two look really similar out of the hand, but one moves straight down and the other exits stage left. Even though he has this tunneling dynamic now, his slider isn't some get-me-over pitch that he uses to tunnel off the breaker. He uses it as a perfect whiff pitch. I'm talking punchies galore. And even when guys actually put the bat on the ball, they usually don't hit it very far, or hard. Since he's gotten the new slider, he hasn't given up more than six hits in a game, which is the longest streak of the sort in baseball history. And they say short guys can't be big league pitchers. It's safe to say that Frankie Montas was within an inch of being labeled a bust in the spring of 2019. Even though his 2018 was solid, Montas could never actually throw the ball in the strike zone, at least not on purpose anyway. Even when the ball was in the strike zone, lefties seemed to always hit it, and hit it really hard. Usually lefties were able to sit sinker and take any sliders more inside than the middle third. Injuries have always also been a factor for him, but that hasn't stopped him from running the sinker up to around 100. Even though he throws hard, it doesn't really move that much, so throwing it 61% of the time isn't exactly the best move, and he figured that out quick. For 2018, Montas worked with Patrick Brennan, a pitching coach at Kansas State University, to work on a pitch that would tunnel off his sinker better than the changeup he already had that was horrible. The decision was made to scrap the changeup and start developing a splitter. Good move. Montas pitched like a man on a mission with his new splitter come 2019. He became one of the best pitchers in the American League and increased his strikeout rate a ton, but his season was cut short after he got caught eating balanced breakfasts. Even though the sample size is small, his split has generated really great numbers against both sides and had more horizontal movement than most splits in the league. The sinker split combo also got him to punch out a ton more hitters, not just lefties too. Righties have shown that they have a hard time hitting 95 plus with run bearing it on their hands and then seeing it again, but this time it falls off the face of the earth. Now that Montas has two off speeds that can net him Ks and use the sinker split dynamics to fool lefties, he's probably going to end up living up to the stud prospect potential he had as a kid. Only if he stops with the uh, balanced breakfasts. Not going to lie, I don't understand how anybody hits this guy like ever. It seems like he always paints the sinker and no one ever hits the slider because it's a frisbee. I mean, why would he even need any other pitches? Well, big league hitters are good, that's why. The sinker slider combo has proven to be deadly. The east to west philosophy of pitching is great for getting strikeouts and ground outs, but you know what you need if you're going to work east to west? More than two pitches. In my most humble opinion, the best ever east to west guy was Greg Maddox. Greg Maddox works sinker, changeup, cutter, curveball, and the occasional four seamer to work off the sink. Sure, everything moved an ungodly amount, and he never walked anybody, but if he only had two pitches, he wouldn't have been nearly as good as he was. 
Adam Adovino did only have two pitches, at least until 2018, if you don't count a four-seamer that he hasn't thrown more than 2% of the time since he picked up the cutter. See, Otto had a solid career as a Rocky up until 2017, and he came in when they needed a good inning or two in the back half, and got the job done every once in a while. But it doesn't matter who you are, that isn't going to last when you're pitching at Coors. 2017 proved that. He just about gave up a run in three out of every five innings he pitched. So in the offseason after 17, Otto bought up a Harlem storefront and installed some edgertronic cameras to quote, set up some pitches. Funny how that works. It didn't take long for Otto to develop a slow cutter similar to Bieber's that he mostly works up and in the righties or middle away. Both spots are to work off his favorite locations for the slider. And they work brilliantly. I mean, check out this sequence to Orioles catcher Jesus Sucre. He starts him off with a cut piece up and in, strike one, and then, damn, that was, that was gross, like really gross. Gross enough actually for Sucre to take this O2 sink piece right down the schmeet for strike three. That tunnel for strike one and strike two gets stuck in the front of the hitter's minds and they don't even have time to react to 94 down the middle, no matter how much it's moving. It makes sense that Otto's become one of the premier relievers in the league and has worked as a vital piece for the dominant Yanks bullpen. Otto always had great stuff, and the slider was great in cores or out of it, but the cutter makes it even better because now he has a weapon to set it up. Well, that's my list. <laughs> it's been so long since I've made one of these, I don't really remember how to end a video. I, I want to thank all of you for watching all the way to the end of the video. I'm really sorry for taking so long to crank out another one, but I appreciate y'all for coming back to the channel too. If this is your first time here and you like this little project, I've got a couple other videos that I'm sure you'll enjoy, and I'll try really soon to get another one in the works. Thanks so much for watching, like I said, and I'll see you guys later. Peace.